Hello folks, in this video we are going to talk about some lesser known facts to any of us. To begin with, we all live in this fantastic world in an era where we have science and technology, our smartphones, our high-end devices to keep us on top of everything. But do we really know everything about everything? Not really. I'll tell you why. Before that, I'll ask you a question. What does the universe comprise of? The obvious answers would be stars, planets, galaxies, we, everything that's around us, including the gases. But trust me, all of this is literally insignificant to the universe. Why? We'll get there. As individuals, you and I, considering a single individual volume compared to the volume of the universe, we all would not be more than 8.452 into 10 raised to minus 54. It's really insignificant. Like nothing in the universe at all. What is the rest 95%? That's the big question. Let me tell you. The answer is pretty simple. Everything else is just dark. Very, very dark. We call it dark because of two major reasons. One, because it's not visible. Two, because it's not completely known yet. Astronomers and astrophysicists refer to it as dark energy and dark matter. But before we get into those, let's talk about a brief history how this came up. Since the Big Bang occurred and the universe came into existence, one thing has remained constant, and that is the expansion of the universe. To study this, in 1929, an American astronomer named Edwin Hubble started studying the supernova phenomena, which is the exploding stars, to understand that the universe is expanding. But you know, that time it was like very chillax that maybe gravity would take care of it, it would put brakes or at least slow down the expansion process. But none of that really happened. During 1990, two independent teams of astrophysicists again came up to study the phenomena of supernova to know that how much is the expansion really slowing. To their surprise, it was not slowing down at all. In fact, it had accelerated. So this made it very clear that there is something out there that is counteracting with gravity and causing all this. This was later termed as dark energy. In order to calculate the energy that is required to overcome gravity, they actually realized that dark energy constitutes nearly 68% of the universe. Another 27% is dark matter. Let us see what each of them is. Speaking of dark energy, there are more things unknown and very less what is known. And whatever we know is not more than just theory. One of the theories says that empty space is not just nothing. It has its own energy, it has its own properties, which is active in large space. So as universe keeps expanding, more and more gap is created. And these gaps are filled by space which has its own energy, leading to faster expansion of the universe. Another theory says that empty space is made up of a lot of particles, which are virtual and temporary. They constantly combine and form from nothing and destroy into nothing. The resulting energy is dark energy. Some other theory says that dark energy is an unknown kind of dynamic energy, either in field or fluid form, which spreads throughout and unlike other energies, it has an opposite effect on the universe. Even though the actual nature of dark energy remains unknown, it is highly suspected that it would have a strong negative pressure to justify the acceleration and the expansion of the universe. Talking about dark matter now, scientists and astronomers actually figured out that there is something in and around the stars, planets and galaxy which holds them together. A matter which doesn't emit nor reflects light, something which is actually dark. Dark matter cannot be seen, but it can be definitely observed. Places with high concentration of dark matter will actually bend the light which passes nearby. To clear out the myths about dark matter, let's talk about whatever dark matter is not. So dark matter is not any form of normal or dark clouds, it is not any stars, planets or galaxies, it is not antimatter because antimatter would react with normal matter to give out unique gamma rays and dark matter is not even black holes because black holes are compact which tend to adversely affect the surroundings whereas dark matter is something which is spread throughout it is all across and it does not really harm to summarize of all that we spoke of 
Dark energy is an unknown energy but still an accepted hypothesis to explain the acceleration and the expansion of the universe. Dark matter on the other hand can be thought as a complicated exotic particle which makes it possible for galaxies to exist and doesn't really interact with light and matter as we expect. Lastly, I would like to make two important and interesting points. One, that together dark energy and dark matter make up most of the universe which is more than three-fourths of the universe. But we are still not sure of how it operates and how it exists. This should keep the curiosity and science going. The second important point I would like to make on a lighter note is that 5% of the universe we know is normal matter. But from universe's perspective, for something which is just 5%, should it be really called normal? Maybe it's time to rethink.